There are so many kinds of kindness in the world, and we're going to talk about a few of them here in our review of the latest from Yorgos Lanthimos. He follows up poor things with an extremely different movie. You think because you've got Emma Stone and Willem Dafoe, oh, this is like a follow-up to poor things. This is going to make sense to me. No, you got to like shift, shift the molecules in your brain. Shift every cell in your body to get ready for this new Yorgos Lanthimos movie. Um, we are not going to spoil. This is going no. to be a non-spoiler review. There is so much to talk about, though, that I want to do a whole separate spoiler talk after the movie comes out. We're early on no. this. It does not come out until June 21st. But we know you guys. We know our audience. We know if there's a new Yorgos <laughs> Lanthimos movie, you are excited about it. So we're bringing it to you now. So sit tight. Non-spoiler review here. Alonzo will describe it. Spoiler talk coming down the road. Details on that coming soon. Kinds of kindness. What's it about, Alonzo? Oh, well, gee, that's a that's a loaded question. Open your eyes and look clearly at what's going on around you. We might all be in danger. Kinds <laughs> of Kindness is an anthology film with three stories that do and don't intertwine. They are all set in the state of Louisiana. They all feature the same cast, but playing different characters, except for one guy who apparently is playing the same character throughout, but he doesn't really speak, so he's not necessarily he's a bit tangential to all of this nonetheless in the first segment jesse plemons plays uh an executive who works for a very powerful man played by willem defoe and it's clear that defoe uh exerts a, a a definite level of control over plemons's life in all the areas and when plemons decides to perhaps push back against that uh, things get complicated, but uh, that one features uh, uh, Margaret Qualley as uh, Defoe's wife, Hong Chow as Plemons's wife, and Emma Stone as a mysterious woman that Plemons encounters at some point. In the second story, Plemons and Emma Stone are married, and she has been lost at sea as part of a scientific expedition, but he holds on to the faith that he will come back. Uh, their closest friends are played by Margaret Qualley and Mamadou Atier, who also appears in all three of these. Um, Defoe plays Emma Stone's dad, and that one also goes to places that are complicated and hard to explain. Mm -hmm. And then in the <laughs> third one, Emma Stone and Jesse Plemons both are members of a cult that is run by Willem Dafoe and Hong Chow, and they are tracking down someone who may or may not be Margaret Qualley, who is sort of the messiah of their very water-based religion. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to get into <laughs> without trying to spoil things. But there are recurring motifs, um, foot injuries, uh, lines of dialogue that pop up over and over again in all three stories. Uh, and as we said in our out of the theater thing, uh, what is inevitable in looking at an anthology film is that some segments are going to be stronger than the other ones. And yeah. it seems to be kind of universally agreed upon by those of us who've seen it, the, the reviews out of can, that the first one is the strongest one. Mm -hmm. But they're all fascinating. They're all very WTF in that Yorgos Lantimos way. And this is Yorgos Lantimos on the uh, a lobster killing of a sacred deer dog tooth end of the spectrum yeah. and less on the favorite poor things end of the spectrum uh, both of which were written by the guy who created the great I'm, Tony well, McNamara Tony McNamara thank you this mm -hmm. is Lantimos uh, working with his longtime collaborator Eftimus Philippou and um, it, even though it is shot in the United States it marks the twisted darkness of their greek and otherwise you know often european based work i'm still kicking this one around in my head and trying to figure out what it all means and what the kinds of kindness even are uh and what is this movie saying about identity and trust and um love and uh you know how we perceive each other and what we need from each other and require from each other and demand of each other it kept me on my toes throughout because i just never knew where any of this was gonna go i think i may have figured it out okay i've, I've got a theory i want to bounce off of you it just occurred to me this morning oh. so while i was downloading the trailer and getting ready to edit what this will eventually be mm -hmm. um, i hadn't watched the trailer in a while and the trailer uses eurythmics Sweet dreams right. are made of as this. As does the film. As does the film, right? And so in the movie, in the very beginning, 
before you even see a single image, it's a dark screen and you hear mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. And so that like sets the tone because that song's amazing and enduring and like you know that riff immediately. And what I realized in retrospect is it's not just a vibe. It's not just a great song to cut a trailer to. It's an overture. It's a roadmap. Right? This is telling you what the next three segments are all going to be about. And they seem totally disparate despite the same cast and despite the kind of storytelling. Um, but they are all connected. Everybody's looking for something. Some of them want to use you. Some of them want to get used by you. <laughs> some of them want to abuse you. you some, some of them, them want, want to, to be abused. abused. That is mm. exactly what is happening here. It's about power. It's about control. It's about the toxicity of fucked up codependent relationships. There's and at least one character who has traveled the world in the seven seas. That Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's really good. That's, that's part of it, too. So I realized, oh, okay, he he's setting up his whole point here because we walked out of it like what do we even see like it was <laughs> thrilling and incredibly crafted and robbie ryan's a cinematographer again and there are some gorgeous moments and all three segments look totally different from each other and yeah. all that craft is there but i figured it out and this is as you mentioned like more in line with you know, dog tooth and the darker side of this filmmaker like the favorite is screwed up in a lot of ways. It's about manipulation and deceit and betrayal, but it's fun. It's yeah. juicy, sexy fun. And then poor things is just straight up empowerment. It is a celebration. It's a woman coming into her own. People want to use and abuse her and she will have none of it. She will become <laughs> who she wants on her own terms and it's, it's celebratory. So this is him going back to the darker side of his, his depiction of humanity. You know, that it, it's cruel and it is, uh, yeah, it's not kind. So kinds no. of kindness is an ironic title Indeed. in that maybe the people on the receiving end of the cruelty are, looking for kindness in whatever connection they've made or perceiving but, it as kindness right or they think this is the kind of kindness that they deserve right so i've come to think about it and really appreciate it a lot more since you and i saw it and hmm. i've got to see it again i was telling chris about it this morning i'm like i want to tell you just enough <laughs> but i also want you to see it with me i've come to like it more the more i've thought about it and cool. and appreciate the variety required of all of these actors because they are playing very different kinds of roles in all three of them mm. in terms of who they are and what they want you know and so i don't know that i love it like i love poor things i love sure. the favorite yeah. i love the lobster yeah but even the lobster you and i were talking about this coming out of our screening like even the lobster is almost romantic and hopeful at the end, right? Like that last gesture, sure, in as a extreme way, as um, it is, yeah. is a, comes from a place of love. <laughs> True. What, but what yeah. say you? But yeah, but poor things, I, yeah, you're right. I like, I walked out of the movie just immediately, like just so excited about it and, and, and charmed and entertained. And, and this one, you know, is no, it was no less engrossing, but I, I kind of left being like, how do I feel about this? And did certain things even happen that I think the we you know like are we meant to think that this happened or didn't happen? You know, particularly the second one. I think I was gonna say in part two definitely plays with what's really happening. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so yeah. I, I mean, uh, it, it's a it hits differently, but it's still like must viewing and and must discussing. You know. Yeah, and Jesse Plemons won Best Actor at Cannes yes. for this. I mean, they're all playing a variety of roles, but his arc in particular anchors it in a poignancy, in a vulnerability. If there's yeah. any humanity in these segments, I think he offers it. Yeah, he's not the only one, I would say, but but yeah. certainly he he gets the most the most range and within the screen time that he has. And, uh, and yeah, I can totally see why, why they honored him. But like, I would argue that like Mamadou Atiyeh's characters tend to be True. fairly sympathetic in this story Two offers one of the most unexpected laughs in a movie I've seen in quite some yep. time. <laughs> I think I know what you're referring to. And I'll just leave it at that. But, you know, even more than my beloved Hundreds of Beavers, I was like, wow, okay. What am I you know? seeing? Right. Yeah.
And if there is any kind of through line as well, Willem Dafoe plays like a father or a father figure in all three, mm -hmm. yes. I would say. And, you know, Father's Day is coming up this weekend. It's if true. If you're in the United States, for example. And you know what your dad might love or the dad in your life? Lodge cast iron products. And there's Heck an awesome yeah. sale going on through June 16th. Take 20% off of all griddles and grill pans. If you want to go and do vegetables out on the grill, you want to go do pancakes for breakfast on Father's Day, you can do it all with Lodge. We will link to them down below. Um, this is a great deal on all their, we love all their products. We use them all around the house all the time. But this in particular is a Father's Day kind of thing. And just, I can imagine how much kinder, what a what a kind of <laughs> kindness it would be to get your dad something like this. How much kinder would the Willem Dafoe figure have been in all three of these segments? And, if you only know, he had Lodge products. And a cast iron skillet, you know, you you wash with like oil and salt. So the water cult would really appreciate the fact that you <laughs> wouldn't be expending it on cleaning up your skillet. So in retrospect, did you like this film? Like, would you recommend this film? I'd recommend it to our viewers, our core people, because this yeah. is exactly the kind of art house shit that they dig. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> the thing. This is a know your audience kind of recommendation. Like, yeah. there are people to whom I am related where I would be like, you know, maybe not your thing. You're not going to, this is not going to be a thing that you're yeah. going to walk out of loving. And other people to whom I'm related, be like, you know what? It's get ready for it, but I think you'll, you'll have a good time with it. Uh, so yeah, I would say if you, if you are, if you like the lobster, if you like dog tooth, then this is your flavor of Lantimos and you should for sure check it out. And you know, even if not, if, if you're just willing to like go where this movie wants to take you, you know, you may not walk out of it loving it, but you'll have seen something. Right. And how often do you and I have that kind of conversation about a movie? Like, I can't wait for our live stream yeah. to get into the nitty gritty of this because there's so much to discuss. Like, I think how often does a work of art inspire that kind of lengthy discussion where you're you're really getting into it and figuring it out? So we're going to do that for you probably that Tuesday after it comes out. Sure. So more details on that later. Um, sure. Alonzo, what? Go ahead. No, it's certainly not a work of art, you know, released by the Walt Disney Company. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, but it is though. It's Searchlight. I, I know. I know. That's Isn't what I'm that saying. strange? Yeah. So for a for a main for a, what is a quote unquote mainstream movie because it is you know these stars coming off of you know the Oscar winning poor things. Um, yeah, this is this is definitely uh, a, a an atypical summer movie. And so if that's the kind of thing that you've been dying for, you're going to get it here. Uh, I'm going to say. An 8.8 .8 based on one wow. viewing, based on one viewing with the option to go higher if I see it again and it, you know, becomes more clear to me. But absolutely, I think this is a terrific movie and, uh, and folks who are down for this kind of thing should check it out. I'm very surprised your number is that high because I did not get that, that feeling from you walking out of it well i mean i was baffled walking out of it but i was still <laughs> energized and that like i need to think about this and and i love the idea of i need to think about this as opposed to i can't wait to forget this yeah for sure um i will say gosh like an 8.5 because okay. i love the first part I really like the third part. I'm not as high on the one in the middle. But then the one in the middle has some singular stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they're all going for it. Sure. You know? The second one is the one that is the most oblique in terms of what we're meant to think actually transpired. Yeah. But I suspect that more, more viewings and more discussion will you know, bring that to light. For sure. Well, I can't wait to talk about this with you guys. We'll have a spoiler review for you soon. Let us know what you think of Kinds of Kindness.